In this video, we will be going through the basics of using FME Workbench. We'll open our FME Workbench and create our workspace. Then we'll read in some data which we'll inspect and visualize. We'll then look at how we can write out our data to any format or coordinate system we desire. Before we start off with the tutorial, we might be wondering, what is FME? Well, FME is a software that allows for seamless data integration, transformation, and automation. So with data in integration, it means that FME supports very many different data formats, which means that it is easy to convert data between different systems. Because of this, FME can read in and write out almost any file format that exists today. With data transformation, it is meant that the imported data can be adjusted in all sorts of ways. Your imagination is really the limiting factor here. For example, one can read data from a CAD system and transform it into a GIS format where we can further adjust or clean up the attributes before we write out the end file, which we might be using for whatever task we need. All this can be achieved in one single workflow. And the beauty of having created, created these workflows is that we can reuse them later. All we need to do is change the imported data. And the automation part of FME revolves around being able to build out a workflow that does a specific task and then automating this workflow by various methods, such as having the workspace run at a specific time or that it is triggered by an event. So let's create a blank workspace and take a look at the FME Workbench interface. The canvas is our workspace where we will build our workflows. It is here that we add our readers, transformers and writers. Each element on the canvas represents a step in our data processing workflow where lines connect between the different elements. Readers can be thought of as our imports and it is through these items that we load in our data so we can work with them through the transformers that are available. Writers output the, our modified data to whatever data format we desire. You can think of the writer as the destination for our data workflow. Next to the writer, here we have the transformers. Transformers are the tools that allows us to modify, filter, and manipulate the imported data through our readers. There are very many transformers. So whatever problem you face, there is a high chance that there exists a transformer that can achieve what you need. The annotation and bookmark are tools that aid in making the workflows more understandable. Through the annotations, you can add label to parts of your project so that you can explain what is happening at that specific point in your workflow. With bookmarks, we can organize our workflow so that we can get a good structure. These things are especially important if you after some time need your workspace, but it was a long time ago you made it so it might become difficult to understand each step of the workflow. On the left side, we have the navigator area. This area gives you an overview of all the components in our workspace. We can easily access our readers, transformers and writers here and edit properties if needed. I think that is sufficient for now. So we will jump into making a new FME workspace and start off learning the two most basic operation that is very often done in FME. And that is the changing between data formats and the changing of coordinate reference systems. So we open FME Workbench and start with a blank empty project. We start with the task of changing data formats. For this example, I will use a shapefile that contains some polygon features representing water bodies. And for this demonstration, we will change the data format from being a shapefile to becoming an AutoCAD file, uh, the 
DWG format. So we press our reader icon here, and we need to specify the format for our data as well as the path or location to our data file. You can specify the data format right away manually by clicking the drop down menu, drop down arrow, or you can just write it in here in the field and write S3 shapefile, for example. But the easiest is to choose the data set first because FME then will recognize the format automatically. So I press the three dots here to navigate to the shapefile I have. And mine is located in this folder, which is called Water Bodies. So I choose this one. So we see that the format is automatically read in. For this shapefile, it does not matter if I choose individual or merge feature types. That is because I have only one feature type in my data set. But if you have several, you get the option here to either have them show separately in the canvas or having them together into one unit in the canvas. So I just press OK here and see that my reader element is here in the canvas. If you only want to run the imported data, you can do this by pressing on the element in the canvas here and press the run just this button. And we press run. Now FME has read in the data and we can inspect it. We have to press the magnifying glass here, but uh, automatically it comes up uh, in the bottom part of the interface here. So in the visual preview, we see the attribute table where we have the ID. Uh, this is just uh, mock data, but we have some names for the water bodies. And to the left, we see the data visually in the graphics field. If you want to add a background map for the visualization pro for visualization purposes, you can right click in the map window and press background map and just choose one of the possibilities. I will choose default light. And we see that the background map is added so it becomes easier to navigate and understand where you are. In order to accomplish our task of changing the data format from shapefile to a CAD file, we only have to add a writer and set the data format of the writer and then connect it with a reader. Like this. We press the writer here. And for the format, we want DWG. So I choose the AutoCAD uh, file type here. And we need to press the three dots in order to specify which folder we want to store our output. And we need to give it a suiting name. I will just call mine water bodies from shapefile. And we press save. Lagre is uh, save in Norwegian. <laughs> and now we have everything, so we just press OK. And we see our writer in the, in the canvas here. The only thing we need to do now is to connect the two elements in our canvas, like this. I drag from this triangle over to the triangle here at our writer. And now these elements are connected. Notice that we keep our imported data on the left hand side and the data we will write out is kept on the right hand side of the canvas. Now we can go to the tab and choose the run button and run entire workspace. Also, you can Press uh, this and the shortcut is F5. And we press run. On the line connection, on the reader and the writer, the number four is displayed, meaning that four features have been written out to the writer. On the writer element, we can view the written data here by pressing view written data. And 
if we go to our folder, we see that our DWG file, Water Bodies from Shapefile, is here. This procedure is often done when modeling water and sewage network system, because often the networks are designed using CAD systems, and we often need to convert the, da the CAD data to GIS formats in order to work with the data in modeling softwares to do simulations of, of the systems. Another very useful tool is to use FME for coordinate transformation. Here we use the same shapefile that we used previously, which is in UTM32, EPSG25832. In FME, it is extremely simple to make this coordinate system change. All we need to do is the same that we did previous. We just add a writer, and instead of changing the data form at this time, we just change the coordinate system. So we read in our data, pressing the reader, and I navigate to my file, which is in this folder for this example, Water Bodies UTM32, and we press OK to read in the data. And now we need a writer here. And I just want to keep it as a shape file, and I want to store it in the same folder, so I choose this same folder. And for the coordinate um, change, we have to change the field here. So it could be, if you don't put anything here, it will be the same as the source. But if you press the arrow here, we can change it to another coordinate system. And I want to choose NTM10. But if yours is not showing up here, you can go to more coordinate systems and just type in the coordinate system that you want. And I want NTM10, so I search it and it comes up here. Double click it. And because I want to uh, change, uh, set my file name to something more specific, I have to set the shape file definition to automatic. Because now I can specify a name for my soon output, uh, for my soon to be outputted uh, file. So I will just call this water bodies ntm10. And now we'll press OK. And our writer is here with the name we want. Like we just did in the previous section, we just connect the reader to the writer and run our workspace. So I connect them, press run entire workspace, and I run it. In our folder, we see our outputted data, which is uh, here with the extension, or in the name you see it's ntm10. So this is the data that is that has the new coordinate reference system. And we can view our written data here. And we can see that when you look in the, at the X and Y, you see that the coordinates are now in NTM coordinates and not in UTM as we looked at previously. These are very useful operations to do in FME, but there is so much more that you can do, and we have really just barely scratched the surface here. So in the next video, I will show how we can create a workspace that does a little more than just changing the format and the coordinate reference system. We will be using transformers. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.